I'm going to share a story, a story of how a group of students were able to build a satellite and launch it into space, staying here at Nepal. When we hear satellite, we think of big, massive satellites with tons and tons of weight, but ours is very small. In fact, it can fit into your pocket. If phones can fit in the pocket, why not satellite? So, the satellite that we built is SanuSat-1, and it was launched in 2022, January 13. So it is in the form factor of a pocket cube, which has a dimension of 5 by 5 by 5 centimeter and weighs less than 250 grams. It all began in 2017, when Mr. Rakesh Chandra Prajapati contacted us and shared his fascination towards space and space technology. And we too wanted to do something in that field. We were starting in third year then. And since we had no knowledge in this field, we, we want started from the ABCs, that is a CANSAT. A CANSAT is not, act, not an actual satellite, but it's just a simulation. So it is dropped from a certain height, and while it drops, drops to the ground through a parachute, it sends data to the ground station, which is shown in the ground station software. So we also built different antennas which could receive data from the satellites. So after the completion of that project, we want to do something big. We want to do, make an actual satellite that will go to space. And that is how we got the idea of Pocket Cube. So a Pocket Cube, since it is small, it has certain advantages. That, are, that is that, one, it is not very complex to build. Next, it doesn't take much time to build. So even the university students can build within their time span. And the last and very important is that the launch cost is comparatively lower compared to launching larger satellites. That is why we selected the uh, Pocket Cube. So we made a team of about 25 students within dip different departments. So there were students from the dep Department of Electrical, Electronics, Computer, uh, Mechanical, and Physics. So we, we made a group and we divided those groups according to different uh, subsystems of satellite. And we used to uh, study different papers, study about different uh, pocket cubes or satellites that were already built, and we'd give presentations to one another and learn from there. So by the time we graduated, we had a paperwork of how our satellite would look, what are the mission of the satellite. So we wanted to make the mission very simple. So uh, we selected a sensor that would not require pointing mechanism. That is why we selected a radiation sensor that could measure the gamma radiation of the low Earth orbit. So we also kept a magnet in the satellite. We know that a freely suspended magnet rotates according to the Earth's uh, magnetic field. That, that would make the satellite stable without needing any external energy. So now let's talk about how a university can be involved or how a university can build a satellite. So actually, these kind of satellites, Pico Nano satellites, were designed for universities so that students studying at a university can build a satellite within the span of two or three years. So the first thing required is a team. So a team with diverse skill set is required. So of course, a university will have different programs, academic programs, and the students can be selected from those different departments. The skills that are required uh, ranges from electronics design to mechanical design, CAD, CAM, similarly, soldering, PCB design, software, programming, and so on. So a uh, diverse team can be set up within the university. The second thing is only one batch of students might not be able to complete the entire project. So every mistakes that you make, every progress that you make, so every errors that are found and every lessons that are learned should be well documented so that whenever the next batch joins, they can just start from that point and not from zero. So that is how the time can be the time constraint can be managed as well. And the last is a workspace, a small workspace. Nothing complicated is required to build this kind of small satellite. So only a room with few electrical mechanical tools, along with a clean box or clean room where the satellite can be uh, assembled is also required. So with these, we can build a satellite. But there comes another uh, things that are also important. The first one is frequency coordination. So if we want to send a satellite to space, 
and communicate with the ground station, we need to take a frequency, a uh, uh, unique frequency, so that it would not interfere with other satellites. And that is given by the ITU, International Telecommunication Union. And we need to form extensive forms. So before doing this, we actually need to have a design of everything. We need to have mathematics of everything, like the link budget, the power required, the antennas that uh, we use, the modulation techniques, and so on. So all of those, those should be filled in the form, and that should be forwarded by the Ministry of Communication, Nepal government. So this will uh, take time from about uh, three months to one year. And this, you should start from the beginning. So one mistake that we did was we design, designed our satellite, we completed the engineering model, and we started this process because we didn't know at that point. So that took us about 1.5 years. So this should be done at the beginning. The next thing is environmental testing. So building a satellite is one thing, but it should be able to survive the extreme environment of the space as well as the extreme vibration that occurs while launching the satellite from the rocket. So uh, these uh, tests are not available in Nepal, but they can be available in various universities, which has aerospace programs. So the satellite can, can be sent there, and if the satellite passes, all those tests will get a certificate. So after we receive the certificate, then we can go for booking the launch. So for launch, they will create a clusters of small satellites, Pico Nano satellites like ours, and they will take it to the rocket, and for that they will they will charge about twenty twenty thousand to twenty five thousand dollars. So after uh, this has been done, it's just a waiting game. We will have to wait until the launch arrives. January thirteen, two thousand twenty two was the final launch date that we did, and on that day it was at around ten p.m. The launch was at around ten p.m. and we are we were ready with our ground station and watching the. Uh, watching the launch live. We were really excited to see that the, uh, our dream was coming true. So uh, after about one hour, the satellite, our satellite was deployed. And while it was deployed, it was just about above our sky, above us. So we had a five minute window to receive data uh, from our ground station. And we tried to uh, receive at that point, but we could not, unfortunately. So we had to wait for the next day for another window. So, but we could not sleep that night, so we waited whole night uh, waiting for a tweet or a mention of saying that we have received from something from Sunset One. Uh, we talked to many uh, ham radio operators and asked them to track our satellite and uh, see if it is alive or not. So we had launched our satellite, but still, since uh, we could not hear anything from the satellite, we were not sure if the mission was complete. So we are really uh, frustrated at that point. But at about 2 a.m., we got a message. We, our ground station of Hungary was able to receive uh, data from our satellite, and our satellite was waving back to us saying, hey, I'm alive. <laughs> that was the time uh, uh, we thought out to ourselves that all the hard work that we did in past four years was really worth it. So at last, after all is said and done, there is still one question is still remaining. That is, what is the role of Sanosat One in the uh, development of the space industry in Nepal? So the answer is simple. Right now, Sanosat One is revolving around the Earth gracefully, and at the same time, it is sending a message to us. That is, we can be in Nepal and space and have a dream about space. We hope to inspire the next generation of makers, students, engineers, and researchers to have a space dream and build satellites in the coming future. Thank you.